Hi. So today is my first major tasting day after having COVID a couple of weeks ago. And I looked through 59 Rieslings from both Eden Valley and Clare Valley. And I was buoyed by the fact that my palate seems to be not only um, back on track, but I think maybe I was desperate for the tasting because it felt very, very precise and on the ball. So I've chosen today because I think I'm really energized by the fact that I'm back tasting. I really missed it um, to do a little cellar check-in. So this is a mini vertical of the um, Jim Barry Armour, which is the icon Shiraz from the Jim Barry Winery in the Clare Valley. Uh, and I'm looking at the 16, 17, 18 and 19 vintages, um, just so that we can get a sense of how they're tasting as aged wines. Uh, and I wanted to point out before I open these wines, I'm literally going to pour them and taste them with you. There's no um, um, prep for this at all, other than telling you what they taste like. Um, these are not high alcohol wines. These are big wines. I mean, the Armour is a big, meaty, full-bodied, complex, exciting wine, but it is not a high alcohol wine. We've got 14.2% from 2016, 13.8% from 2017, a cool vintage, 13.6% from 18, and 14.1% from the warm 19 vintage. So these are really, I would say, very balanced and elegant wines. Let's have a look. Okay, so looking at the four wines colour-wise, these are basically exactly the same. 16 to 19, I would have trouble using my eyes determining which was which in the glass. Certainly on the nose, there's a little bit of difference, but these wines are slow ageing, which is a really, really wonderful thing to note. Now, <clears throat> looking um, at the most recent vintage, this is 2019, this is just coming out now. This harnesses to me the greatest parts about the Clare Valley when it comes to Shiraz because it's very easy for this region which has a really high diurnal range up to 40 degrees in summer and you know on the same day one degrees overnight. Um, there's good elevation in this area that goes up to 610 meters above sea level down to about 190 so there's a nice range there as well. Um, and I think that this vineyard was planted in 1968, so we get the benefit also of some older vine material, which is good because it gives it a bit of concentration and density in structure. So um, what we see here <clears throat> in the best Clare Valley Shiraz, and this is what I was going to tell you just then, is that it's very easy for them to achieve opulence, generosity, volume, and, and a, a velvety fruit texture when it comes to Shiraz. But what I want to see within a, a sensible um, ripening bandwidth is a little bit of savoury characters introduced as well. I want to see a little bit of deli meat. I want to see exotic spice. I want those things as well as mulberry, raspberry, um, even cassis and blueberries, all that sort of thing. I want to see the savoury content because that's what makes these wines complex. And this wine has got that. And that's why I love it because it has that savoury overlay. So 2019. At the moment, it's still so fresh and so vibrant and so alive and so young. But you do get this pink peppercorn Szechuan character. There's a bit of huasin and there is shaved deli meat and all of that good stuff, as well as a bedrock of mulberry, raspberry. There's a little bit of licorice in there, which sometimes can come from a later pick, but this has not had that. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful balanced wine. And the best part is the length of flavor because I can still absolutely taste it right now. Uh, and that's a really good sign for a wine. You want them to be long. If they're not long in the finish, they're not a good wine. This is very long. Um, moving backwards in time to the 2018 vintage, this is showing a little more dark chocolate and berry spice on the nose. This has got like a coolie character without that jam, um, without the jam connotations that some people will make from a coolie comment. In the mouth, it's incredibly fresh. This is a really pure kind of pristine character. Um, 
fruit character where this has a, a nice broad spectrum, maybe from the warmer vintage of meat and exotic spice and fruit. This is much narrower and much finer, much prettier red fruits and such. Um, I would say I'd probably drink the 19 before the 18 just in terms of the pleasure this is delivering now, but um, I feel that both of them are going to increase in time. I'm sort of regretful that they've been opened at this point. Moving into the cooler 27, 2017 vintage I mentioned, well, this was 13.8% alcohol. This is really leaning into the deli meat and the Szechuan peppercorn and all of those savoury exotic characters. Eminent balance, brilliant concentration. <clears throat> I think I'm becoming immune. <laughs> I'm becoming immune to big reds. I feel like I've been swimming in a sea of Barossa Valley Shiraz and McLaren Valley Shiraz. And so concentration is really something that I'm just like, yeah, it's concentrated, but it's not heavy. These are not heavy, dense wines. These are concentrated, intense wines without the weight, which is really exciting because it means you can have more than one glass. Moving into the 16, 14.2% and the highest on the table so far. And actually the most open, this has got like a boysenberry character on the nose. Wow, I could smell this for ages. It's really complex. There's like there's meat and there's fruit and there's exotic spice. There's tea and there's resin. And there's all sorts of characters in there. It's really this, I mean, this would, these are literally just opened right now. So can you imagine what they would be like with an hour or two in a decanter? All of that complexity is wrapped around a core of pure fruit. These are incredible wines, and I really thought that they were going to be before I before I was properly introduced to them um, a couple of years ago. I really expected them to be big, dense, broad-shouldered, blocky, muscular wines, and they couldn't be further from it. I mean, they've got they've got la multitudes of layers of spice and fruit and meat, and I keep saying that, but they really do represent the best of what the Clare Valley is able to produce. Um, and if you have got some in your cellar, I'd probably hold off drinking some of these earlier vintages. I'd go even further back. Maybe I'll do a vertical further back so we can see what they look like as older wines. Um, in a nutshell, delicious and really, really exciting expressions of what the Clare Valley is capable of. Mm.